I want to welcome a member of President Trump's legal team and the executive director of the American Center for Law and Justice, Jordan Seculo. Jordan, great to have you on the Thanks, program. Greg. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Sure. Thank so, you. So, Jordan, we've got the Pennsylvania case basically thrown out, but Texas and then just a snowballing effect of states right. joining Texas, that's got to hold weight with the Supreme Court, correct? Well I, well, I can already report, now the Supreme Court has put on the docket that the, the parties, so the four states named here, Georgia, Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, when you look at uh, the states that were named, they have to now respond by Thursday at 3 p.m. to this bill of complaint. And they have to respond to, to very specific items. Uh, so the Supreme Court is not just considering uh, what Texas filed today. They are now going the next step, which is saying we want a response from the states named. We want a response from Pennsylvania, from Wisconsin, from Georgia. Uh, so, I, again, I think it's very clear. that, And this is the case we've been talking about to, to reach SCOTUS. This is the outcome determinative case, 62 electoral college votes at stake, enough to change the outcome of the election if, as you pointed out, Grant, in the relief, there's kind of two reliefs sought. One is these legislatures, which are all controlled by Republicans, can seat new electors uh, because the elections were violated. The electors clause is count one, due process and equal protection in the Constitution. And because of that, uh, they can seat new electors. If they have a problem doing that, it then goes to Congress by state de delegation. And in the House, Republicans control that by 27 to 22. So it'd be Republicans choosing the next president if it had to go to the House of Representatives. This is major, though, because, Grant, the court didn't just take this and issue an order uh, denying it or something like that or, or, or maybe coming up with opinions later on tomorrow. They are requiring these four states to actively respond by Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time to the allegations in this bill of so, complaint. And that's, that's different than most court cases at the Supreme Court because this is a case of original jurisdiction where the court has that original jurisdiction in the Constitution because it is state versus state. All right, so can the court literally say the, this election is invalid and you need to find another way to appoint electors? I mean, is that the bottom line here? Is that what the court would end up saying if they rule in favor of the president? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the court could absolutely... I mean, th listen, they've got... If the, if the equal protection, if due process was violated, if, if the elector's clause in the Constitution... These are all constitutional challenges that Texas is bringing... If those were violated, it affects everyone in, in this current case would be everyone in Texas. So, and now we're seeing, as you pointed Jordan. out, all these other state AGs start adding on. And if it, if it impacts my vote in a different state, then my equal protection rights were violated because of the irregularities, the wrongdoing, not following, I think, especially the electors clause, which says specifically state legislatures make the rules and change the rules. That's what the Constitution says, not courts. So even though Pennsylvania, they didn't get the injunctive relief today in Congressman Kelly's case, this gives the court an opportunity to look at it on the merits, and they're going to be getting briefing on this. So now Pennsylvania is going to have to respond and say, why on earth was it okay for a court to do this when your state law and the U.S. Constitution says that you, you can only do this with the state legislatures? And the state law actually has even more conditions. All right, so Jordan, two things here. One, I worry about the time aspect of this, so I'd like to get your response sure. to that. And the other is just flat out, everybody knows I'm, I'm a big pro-Trump guy, all right? I, everybody knows they know where I want this to sure. go. But it looks to me like it's an open and shut case when I look at judges deciding you can extend the mail-in ballots, when, when you look at election judges in counties saying, well, you can let this people cure ballots and these people can't cure ballots. This is open and shut constitutional uh, violations. What am I missing here that this is going this far without a judge stepping in? Uh, you're missing a lot of the, the politics of this. And ultimately, what, what came about with all those lawsuits, even the ones that weren't successful, is the gathering of all this information. 
that then Texas and their attorney general, Ken Paxson, was able to put together in this brief. So whether or not the lawsuits were successful in a state like Michigan or Pennsylvania or Georgia, uh, again, or Wisconsin, the four states named here, you got all this information, and it's specifically going at the heart of constitutional challenges. Now, are we up against a wall with time? Of course we are. But the Supreme Court has already noted right now they're not worried about this uh, today being the you know this day that electors are selected. Right. Uh, they, they're pushing this to the tenth for the response. Uh, it's the 14th when the Electoral College votes. But as we pointed out, as Justice Ginsburg has pointed out, the real key is January 6th when Congress certifies the vote. So there is time because this is right at the Supreme Court. The Supreme right. Court cannot just send this back well, down for the to the appellate courts. I think, I think for the Newsmax audience, they need to understand this is the be-all, end-all case to determine really the outcome of yeah. this election. Well, uh, this is the major challenge, the one we were waiting for. It has enough electoral votes at stake to change the outcome. It is outcome determinative, well, and the court is deciding that they want more briefing. Jordan, and that is a great that is great news, Grant, Jordan, that the other side has to respond. Well, it's no coincidence that we led off the top of this show with this case, and of course, having you, Jordan, on the program to lay it out for us. Um, literally a, br a brilliant legal mind, buddy. I appreciate you coming on the program. Good luck to the team. Absolutely. And uh, keep us posted, all right? We will certainly we'll keep watching. Will do, Grant. Thank you.